Hello, 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 beautiful people. How are you today? Here we are um, in another episode of Relax and Raunchy Relationship Podcast with another awesome guest. Uh, she is Estelle um, Kumhi, and uh, she's the number one authority in helping career women overcome binge and overeating using her signature quit binge eating formula. From a background in business analytics, Estelle now leads various programs on changing mindsets around eating and healthy food choices, and she supports her clients to cultivate healthy eating habits and to build trust with food. Ah, oh, it's just such a very poignant uh, topic or expertise to have right now because we just finished uh, the festive season. Now we're coming to the new year. I mean, I guess uh, whenever you tune into this podcast, whether it's in January or in February or in uh, the end of the year, um, anytime, <laughs> I bet you, you can uh, connect with what um, Stella has to say later on. So Stella, as a holistic health coach, she infuses yoga, mindfulness, and energy medicine into her consultations with clients. She's passionate about holistic health. She sees yoga as a therapy for the mind and soul, considering herself fortunate to facilitate yoga experiences. Estella sessions encourage clients to dive into the self-transformation that health practices like um, positive mindset, yoga, and meditation can provide. So welcome, Estelle. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Ingrid. And I'm just fortunate to be here as a guest on your show. Um, like you said, this um, topic can be quite a, a big one beginning of the year. So let me introduce you. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> a very different way of hosting a podcast. Uh, such a great in initiative. So Ingrid Galloway is the founder, uh, re um, relationship coach, and chief relaxation officer, and I hope I say this right, of Kayangan, meaning heaven, a wellness clinic in Sydney. She has been a relationship coach for over 11 years and a spa therapist for 21 years. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and mainly uh, she used to do this um, in five-star hotels, day spas, um, all throughout Sydney. Uh, so she is used, used to looking after thousands of highly stressed clients from all over the world. Wow, that's amazing. Um, she practices uh, from Kayangan, and from clients' homes and offices and hotel rooms and online. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're just all over the place. <laughs> Her work has always focused on stress, relaxation, and relationships. She does one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, group workshops, and soon virtual and in-person retreats for the brokenhearted singles and loving couples. Yes, thank so you cool. so much for your intro. You know, your tribe may not uh, know who I am, so therefore it's good to introduce me. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, now I'm curious to find out what is your why? What is it? Why, why do you do what you do? Uh, you know, like I think we can talk about that for, for many hours, but I'll, <laughs> I'll try and keep it as short as possible. Um, in short, I struggled with emotional eating and two different eating disorders, uh, binge eating disorder and orthorexia for over 13 years. So, um, and in the space when I was struggling, I, there was no one who could help me. I reached out to obviously the different diet gurus because I thought it was just an eating issue. Um, that didn't help. I reached out to psychologists and, you know, they said to me, well, you don't look like a binge eater, so you can't be one. And <laughs> interesting so you can't pick it up. Yeah. So for me, I was just struggle. Uh, I was just struggling and struggling and I tried so many things on my own. Um, and through that, I, I, I really I just felt hopeless. I felt afraid. Um, 
that I would just always be this way. I'd always just struggle and not have any control around food. And, you know, for me, that was just so hard and such a lonely journey. And because of that, I wanted to make sure that um, other people don't struggle like that. And other people, um, other women in particular, can just find a better way uh, because there is a better way. There is a, a way without, you know, being obsessed and just thinking about one thing and one thing only all the time. Mm. Um, and uh, 2015, I had a um, blood clot in my brain. And this really kind of paused everything for me. And I realized life is not about this cycle of eating. I needed to sort that out once and for all. And it also brought to light that my purpose was not here to um, help businesses. My purpose was here to help people. And that's when I started um, like realizing that my purpose is there to help others heal um, and heal their relationship with food. And that is pretty much my why. <laughs> It is so important because, well, we have to eat every day. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. And what we put into our mouth and, and why, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because of that, we can't feel like we are slave to it or we can't feel like we can't trust ourselves around it. Um, we need to have a peaceful kind of relationship with it, you know, and with ourselves. That's right. Yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing that. Oh, such a such a pleasure. I'd love to know what your why is. Yeah. So um, I actually came from Indonesia, and uh, well, you probably noticed my my tattoo. It's very tribal. It's very Indonesian. <laughs> <laughs> um, I came from a very religious um, family, and I learned um, by observing. And, and living in, in such community, um, there's a lot of shame and guilt and suppressed anger in my upbringing. So I felt that that really didn't sing to my soul, right? So I felt that uh, the need to uh, rebel and I decided to uh, go overseas to get married to my first husband to, not only that I, I loved uh, my first husband, but also because I wanted to escape from my mother. <laughs> I was like, uh oh, that's not the best reason to get married. <laughs> yes, no, don't, don't follow my footsteps in, in that particular thing. <laughs> right. So, after being married for um, 10 years, um, unfortunately, it turned into an abusive marriage. So, then I left. And in my uh, self healing journey, I went back to college, studied um, counseling, life coaching. Uh, connecting with a couple of therapists to help myself and also went on to a journey of the like self-development seminars to um, be able to heal myself and then attract my um, new partner so um, currently I'm still with my second husband hopefully my forever husband <laughs> we've been married for 12 years it will be 13 years this year and we are blessed with two kids so um, I'm here because I'm, uh, I'm on purpose. I'm passionate to help, you know, stress um, couples and couples that may be in similar sort of predicament, you know, uh, the relationship is full of shame and guilt and somewhat anger, perhaps also um, some mental health issues like depression and anxiety because I, I experienced all that and some people <laughs> may have lost their uh, material i experienced that as well due to my divorce um not very wise with money so i lost everything that i own um but then i'm here because i managed to rebuild everything so it is possible there is hope there is hope if you have hit rock bottom people there is hope i am the uh, the proof of it <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's such a beautiful story and I just love the fact that you <laughs> decided to run away from home and <laughs> yes. marriage was the answer I think sometimes when we're young we um 
we we get ourselves into funny predicaments, don't we? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, you know, if you don't uh, fix it in the source sort of level, in the core level, it doesn't matter where you move to. You still uh, feel the effect of that strained relationship. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So you focus on relationship with food. I focus on relationship with other human beings, but especially with intimate partners. That's what I love. Oh, I love that. And that's, you know, such a a beautiful place for us to be. And I think, you know, coming out of such a, quite a a testing time during, you know, 2020 and Mm. lockdown situations, I am sure a lot of relationships um were at, were tested as well <laughs> definitely tested yes so i have um the next question for you Stel. three tips on how to overcome emotional eating in the new year because uh as you mentioned you know relationship can be tested either they uh, they become broken or if not broken maybe a little bit more fragile and people tend to um overeat or eat emotionally so how to overcome those? Yes. Okay. So, you know, the term obviously emotional eating suggests that we are not eating because out of hunger or physical needs, there's an emotion to it. So if we can identify emotional eating, first of all, um, then that's going to be a good step for you, you know, understanding when you are actually in a space of, um, eating because you need to survive or eating because um, it's something else. And usually that something else is emotion or habit. So um, mindfulness is probably something that can come quite handy when you are eating. Figure out um, if you find that you are just gobbling food down, you're rushing food all of a sudden, or you've just all of a sudden started eating a lot more than what you usually do just bring a little bit of mindfulness to the times that you do eat and ask yourself is this because I'm actually physically hungry because sometimes it is like we it's it's normal to be hungry and that's by all means eat if you're hungry but if you feel well no I've, I've just eaten but I can still just eat like another like you know liter of ice cream then you know Uh, And bringing that mindfulness to that and asking, well, okay, um, this might be hard, but is this maybe an emotional factor? And you might not be able to identify what emotion it is, and that's fine. We often think, oh, no, we have to pinpoint exactly what the emotion is and, you know, fix that in the moment. But if we can just say I'm feeling emotional or I'm emotional eating, that's already bringing that mindfulness and awareness to um, that specific meal or our behavior in that point. Can you give me one example, sorry to cut you, can you just just give one example of the emotion that you mentioned about? Yeah, so um, usually emotional eating is a form of comfort eating and comfort eating comes from more of the, the emotions that are not so feel good. Like, you know, there is a lot of um, happy emotional eating. So when we celebrate um, with cake on birthdays or, you know, um, mince pies over Christmas time, <laughs> that's more of an emotional, happy, happy emotional eating. However, a lot of times emotional eating comes from us feeling something that feels so uncomfortable in the body. Um, and usually those emotions are boredom loneliness, pain, um, resentment, um, you know, feeling like in your, for your clients, feeling like they're not worthy of love. Um, Those are the kind of emotions that can be quite um, even physically uncomfortable in the body. And our bodies actually feel, I don't want to deal with this. I want to distract myself. And sometimes food is a really easy distraction from those emotions. Yes, you just grab whatever is available in the cupboard or fridge. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So what are the tip number two? Tip number 
two is emotional healing. So if you've identified that, yes, I am eating emotionally, it will be worth your while to start figuring out, well, um, if I can't pinpoint the emotion, I need to actually just um, heal some, some emotions and start with any emotions and just identify um, ident identifying emotions will start helping you to move into the other emotions. But if you know you're eating out of loneliness or boredom, start to heal that, that emotion instead of, um, you know, if you know, if you realize you on the couch overeating yeah, and you realize, oh, okay, I'm bored, then just like kind of sit back and breathe into that um, emotion and rather feel it and go, okay, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to feel what this boredom feels like. And it's, it is going to be uncomfortable. And this is why, you know, um, you know, asking for help in emotional healing can be such a great tool because um, one, there's someone there to, to help you and, you know, guide you through the process. And the other reason is um, they've probably been in that situation as well, but they know how to get you to the other side and they know how to start um, opening up that wound. I call them wounds. Um, and sometimes they can be quite deep and they can go into childhood and they can be in the subconscious. And yes. if, if they are in the subconscious, they will keep coming up and keep um, resurfacing. So having that awareness, embracing the emotion and then asking for further help if you feel like, oh, I just don't, I'm, I don't know how to heal this any further. That's the second one. <laughs> And the last one. The last one is relaxation. And I think you will agree with this because oh, yes. you are the expert in relaxation and you probably know how people, when they come out of a session with you, how they feel, how their bodies feel. Um, and nowadays, we don't give ourselves downtime. We are 24 seven, go, go, go. We wake up in the morning. First thing we do is look at our emails or we look at the news and then we've got ourselves already in overdrive mindset. We kind of disconnect ourselves from who we are and we, um, that causes stress in the body as it is. Um, so we carry on through our day. Everything that um, adds up is more and more stress. At the end of the day, we exercise, but we're in so much stress that the exercise that we add onto our day is even stressful because the body's thinking, oh, okay, now I'm in a stress mode. Now she's running. I must be more stressed or running away from something. <laughs> so um, relaxation is something that is going to just help soothe um, your nervous system. Yeah. And when the nervous system is calm, a, we are not going to be searching for comfort foods because we're probably in more of a, a better state. Mm. And also, we are um, when the nervous system is calm, we don't have cravings for high energy foods because our bodies are not uh, our bodies don't think that they need to run in the next five minutes. So um, we calm down that nervous system in a beautiful way when we relax. And relaxation doesn't have to take, um, you know, hours on end. It could be as quick as, um, you know, five minutes of just taking a tea break, staring out the window, all the way ranging into a half day spa treatment with um, at your beautiful Kyrian, um, you know, uh, premises. Whatever the case is, you know, do what you can, but make sure that you bring in that relaxation. Um, and if you can do that more than just once a day, uh, that's even better for you. Love it. Because when we're feeling more relaxed, calm and uh, content, yeah, we don't have to look for that something else to fill the void. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And... Um, you know, there's just so many other benefits of being relaxed as well. Um, 
you know, just from a physical, emotional, even spiritual perspective, um, being in a relaxed space, we make better decisions as well, whether it's in relationships, whether it's how we react in the world or how we choose our foods. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Great job. Um, there. Yeah, yeah. So did you want to share three easy tips for stressed out couples in their relationship? Oh, I actually prepare, prepare something heavy and juicy uh, earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not easy. I, I choose the topic of infidelity. Ooh, <gasps> oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> So three tips on how to overcome your partner's infidelity. Some serious stuff, but necessary. <laughs> infidelity is one of the top three of the uh, breakup causes, right? So um, infidelity, communication, money are top three causes um, of breakups, typically. Right, so um, three tips. Number one, ask for professional help as Stell earlier mentioned that it's so useful, so helpful to ask for professional help because either the uh, professional has been there before, so can uh, um, hold space for you and also bring you over to the, the end result, right? Um, so during coaching or counseling sessions, you know, allow yourself to express your emotions in a healthy way. We've been talking mm -hmm. about emotional eating. Yes, it is very, very important for you to be able to express your emotions, but in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. So probably you are in a state of shock or disbelief or anger because you just learned that your uh, partner has been uh, unfaithful to you. So if you need to cry, cry. If you need to get angry, get angry, right? But do it in a safe space, being listened to by a third party who is going to be objective, non-judgmental, listening intensely to your hurt because you're hurting and acknowledge how you feel. So that will be the first step to healing, okay? Um, secondly, if you can find it in your heart to forgive, or um, and then stay in the relationship, get the commitment from your partner to be open, honest, and cut out the source of temptation. For example, the temptation may be porn, right? Or maybe certain friends or a particular habit. And set your boundaries firmly, such as, this is it, all right? This is it. Next time you are unfaithful again, you're out. Okay, so set your boundaries because um, you don't want to keep on the forgiving sort of uh, journey, meaning that you don't actually value yourself. Yes, okay, people make mistakes. Yes, okay, they deserve a second chance. But then um, you are setting your boundaries that you are not to be, uh, you're, you're not a mat, you know, to to be, a, what is the saying? You're... you're <laughs> Was it a doormat? Or a doormat. You're not a doormat. That's it. That's the word that I'm looking for. <laughs> if you can't, if you can find the space in your heart to forgive, then okay, forgive, but then set your boundaries firmly. And number three will be refrain uh, from pointing and blaming um, your partner continuously because it will not heal the relationship. Yes, I understand you're you're angry. Yes, I understand you're frustrated. Um, and yes, I understand that naturally we are wired to just pointing and blaming because that's the easiest fallback mechanism, easiest, yeah, fallback mechanism. But prom I promise you, it will not heal the relationship. So instead, have a look at the deep source of the issue and communicate openly and frequently without being too emotional. So if you can switch on your more logical state of mind rather than your emotional state of mind, I bet you it will help tremendously. So for example, if the infidelity is the result of lack of intimacy between the two of you, um, try to identify what's the real reason of that lack of intimacy and address it. So what is it? Is it due to a lot of fighting for a long period of time? And what caused the fighting? Ask again, ask deeper. 
Is it because your parenting styles are very different? Or is it because your partner cannot manage money well, so you become resentful? Or is it because of meddling family members that cause tension between you two? So find out what is the core problem and address it. So those are my three tips. Ah, oh, beautiful. I love that. And just a question for you. What are your thoughts about forgiveness, even if you choose not to stay together? Oh, yes. Uh, number one is forgiveness because... Uh, if you harbor a lot of resentment and anger within yourself, that will kill you. Just mm. <laughs> <laughs> it will not heal yourselves. Like uh, when you have, uh, oh, hello, that's my little one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just Before peeking I, behind the thing. Please, thank you, darling. I don't edit my podcast, by the way. So whatever happens, happens. <laughs> so yeah, if you harbor anger, that will kill the healthy cells in your body. So I, Literally, it is not worth it. If you decide not to stay in the relationship, that's fine. It's your call, all right? But forgive and move on because uh, you deserve it. It's you yourself deserve it. Yes. If you keep the, the anger, resentment within you, you will get sick eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I feel, I feel the same. And, you know, like when I speak to my audience and my clients, it's also forgive yourself whether you've eaten emotionally or not we, you know it's it's fine you know but if you hold on to that that is where um you're just doing yourself a, a big disservice and uh, so forgiveness is always always key in relationships yes wonderful all right people so now we go on to the fun part of the podcast which is the true and false statement now Stella gave me two statements Stella is an adrenaline junkie and started jumping off cliffs at the age of 10. Whoa, go Stell. And then number two, Stell was an Olympic gymnast. Um, hmm, I will choose number one to be the true uh, statement because um, I just love people that, you know, kind of like rebel. <laughs> <laughs> and ought to kind of like um, on the borderline of danger a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. Uh, oh. I just love things with heights, um, uh, you know, like tree climbing and all those kind of things. Sometimes it still scares me, but like I, I, I still just get this absolute rush from it. And yeah, I was probably one of the youngest kids. Uh, that would cliff jump um, into this beautiful lake um, back back home in South Africa when when I was about ten years old. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. That's great. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. Well, Ingrid's true or false. Um, Ingrid also gave me two true or false statements, and the first one is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think I need to alleviate the issue for the moment. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> this is what happens when you have kids, people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think we've all just kind of gotten used to um, things happening in the background of Zoom sessions. Like 2020 really changed <laughs> the format of, like, you know, business calls and video calls. And, yeah. You know, if, if well, you have a problem with that... <laughs> This is real. This is what happened in, in my life. Then. Yeah, well, I usually have my dog running into client sessions and shaking his toy and things. And so for podcasts, episodes, I actually close the door and he gently waits outside. Yes. That's okay. So which one do you think is correct? Okay, well, let me just call them out quickly. So Ingrid gave me two statements. The first one was Ingrid's husband frantically looking for his wedding rings throughout the house. Or Ingrid's sister frantically looking for her wedding ring throughout the house and office. I'm going to go with Ingrid's husband frantically looking for his wedding rings because he'd be in a lot of trouble if he lost his wedding rings. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. Actually, um, well, both of my kids, you know, uh, they're, they're quite random. But uh, in these particular instances, um, it was not this one uh, that was my youngest daughter by the way and um, 
this particular infant caused by my eldest. Uh, she was how old at the time? Uh, maybe around about four. Um, she's now almost 11. And um, so my husband just I'm like, oh, where are my rings? Uh, normally he put them uh, by the bedside table and then all of a sudden they're not there, right? Uh, so he looked and he looked, he went to the office as well and asked everyone in the office, it's like, did you see my, my rings? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> and guess what? I found it in the Rara house. Let me show Ooh. you what Rara house looked like. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, this is it's the crazy. Rara house. <laughs> wow. She... She put, yeah. she, she put the rings there. Like how, <laughs> how can you guess that your rings actually disappeared into the Rara house? Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. You would have searched for days. <laughs> <laughs> shenanigans, kids shenanigans. It's never yeah. ending in our household. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but then it created, you know, lots of laughter and joy. Once, once you can, you know, get over the frustration initially, you, you can only laugh. Otherwise, you go crazy because there are so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Stel, my last question for you. What do you do to either relax or add raunchiness into your relationship? Well, the relaxation is easy. We just connect with nature together. Um, my husband and I are both adventurous and we, we love the outdoors. So that brings a lot of relaxation. Yep. The raunchiness is really, again, almost similar to my advice I gave about eating. Um, first of all, being mindful about your partner, being mindful about how you feel and um, bringing that um you know, into all aspects of your life, even when things get down and dirty, you know. <laughs> if you're um, not present in the moment, things will get lost. Um, so being mindful is one that's, that's really, really important. And again, emotional healing is, you know, if you, um, I have found, you know, from personal experience, if I was in highly stressed um, modes, mm. you know, my sense of, um connection with my husband wasn't the same yeah. you know and um so making sure that I you know bring that awareness to my stress levels and being being again being relaxed um is always something that helps me just um wonderful so mindfulness 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 people <laughs> being mindful even during intimate time yay i love it love it love it love it <laughs> all right people so thank you very much for listening to our uh, collaboration and watching this video and uh, thank you Stel, for coming um, as my podcast guest i'm sure a lot of people will be able to relate to uh, your three tips and also um, you know learn to apply to their daily lives so that will be great now if you can um, like and subscribe my youtube channel ingrid galloway that will be great and also next week for sure i will be coming with a new uh podcast episode with another awesome guest now Stel, if people would like to connect with you how can they oh yeah thank you so much uh, first of all thank you for having me this has been so much fun i loved all your questions <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a nice giggle and you know like often emotional eating and talking about eating disorders can be very serious so i love oh, this <laughs> not not a very serious podcast this one <laughs> <laughs> so um if, if anyone wants to know more about emotional eating, you're welcome to join me on my Facebook group called Food Freedom for Emotional, for Binge and Emotional Eaters. So if you just type that into the, the search bar, you can find that. I also have my own podcast called Beyond Overeating by Wholesome Lifestyle Project. And you can search for that on most of the podcasting platforms. Um, otherwise, my website, wholesomelifestyleproject.com wonderful so i will um give one link on the uh, uh 
uh, comment, not on the comment, on the text when I um, put this out. And people, if you would like to ask more about relationship tips or uh, would like to, you know, get my support in one-on-one -on -one coaching or maybe going to my upcoming retreat for couples, then you can uh, connect me on my Facebook page as well. So www.facebook.com forward slash Kayangan Relationship Coaching. That's K-A-H-Y-A-N-G-A-N. <laughs> I have to spell that out because I know it's a tricky name. <laughs> All right, people. Thank you so much for watching this and keep well. Lots of love. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.